Hey everyone, how are we doing? On April 8th, I saw the matinee of Children of a Lesser God by Mark Medoff at Studio 54. And it has a runtime of around 2 hours and 20 minutes and a 10 minute like intermission. Um, the show actually finally had its opening night last night on April 11th. The very basic plot of the show is that it's a bittersweet love story between James and Sarah's relationship, their views on the deaf and hearing world, and that every scene in this play takes place in James Lee's mind. The show stars Joshua Jackson of Dawson Creek's and Fringe fame as James Lee, a professor who teaches speech um, to the deaf and hard of hearing students. Laura Ridloff as Sarah Norman, uh, James's former student and now wife. John McGinty as Orrin Dennis, a student at the school who can speak and read lips. Anthony Edwards of ER fame as Mr. Franklin, James's boss. And Keisha Lewis as Mrs. Norman, Sarah's mother. Uh, Trochelle Edmond as Lydia, another student at the school who can also speak and is very hard of hearing. And Julie Serda as Edna Klein, a lawyer that is hired by Oren. Um, originally, this show came out in 1979 on Broadway with a movie in 1986 starring William Hurt and Marley Matlin. Um, I've never seen this movie, but I have heard of it, and I know Marley won an Oscar for her role as Sarah. I should go check it out, and I will do so later. A few thoughts on this production. Um, this play does take place in the 1970s, and it has a fantastic soundtrack. And this play opens up and ends with Stevie Wonder's Love and Need of Love Today. And they also used a couple of Earth, Wind, and Fire songs and Wing Silly Love songs. And that was during a dancing scene with James and Sarah. The, uh, the staging was quite simple. It had like few bare trees, like I think birch trees, uh, with door frames intermixed with, you know, chairs. And it was bathed in this blue light to symbolize um, that this is a play from memory. And occasionally tables and blackboards would show up um, as the other set's props. It was, I felt that it was genius how this set was designed because it was used as a bedroom, a classroom, a kitchen, and as the woods and a pond. This production also used closed captioning so everyone in the audience, including those who were deaf and hard of hearing, could understand the words that were spoken. It was at times translated with some of the characters who were signing to one another. I actually wish this would be used more in other productions so everyone, regardless of being deaf or hard of hearing, um, will know what's going on in both plays and musicals. I do want to note that the screen that they use for the closed captioning is above the set. And I overheard some people talking about this that because they were in the first few row, like front rows, they could not see it. They were actually wondering why people kept looking up and then somebody told them from behind, oh, there's a thing that they could not see. So if you are deaf or hard of hearing and you just want to see what's going on or you want close captioning, you should get the seats further, like further back in the orchestra or the balcony seat or the rear mezzanine seats where I actually sat. I did feel that the pacing for this show was a bit slow. But it wasn't that bad. The, I mean, the actors were engaging, so um, it's only a little bit noticeable. It does pick up after the second act. Now let's talk about the cast. I thought all of the characters were great. Uh, true standout for me was Lauren Ridloff as Sarah. Uh, from the beginning and end, she gives such a powerful performance, especially during the second act and Sarah's breakdown. This character only signs because she was pure deaf, but you do not need to know any sort of sign language at all to get what she was feeling. Her character tried to make the hearing characters uh, understand that she does not need to speak or to hear to be a complete person. I'm hoping that Lauren will get a Tony nomination just for her performance alone. It was just so powerful and it just made you understand that the struggles that deaf people do go through in the hearing world. It was just, it was very eye-opening. I thought Joshua Jackson was good as James Leeds. He does speak throughout this play. Like, he talks a lot, and, I, and there were some people who felt he talked too much, but he was there to translate what Sarah was saying and what a couple other characters were saying and to translate, especially if 
Sarah and Orin were kind of arguing um, between one another. Um, and I thought there was like one hilarious scene. I, I almost cracked up in the audience where he jumps onto one of the trees to emphasize that he's climbing up to Sarah's window. And he was kind of like struggling. He's like, please let me in. <laughs> and she's kind of like playing around with him with that. It was just hilarious. How adorable was Trishel Edmond as Lydia? She was like probably the cutest character in this play. Uh, especially when she had such an obvious crush on James Leeds. And slight spoiler, um, James and Sarah go through this major argument. And Lydia notices and she comes out and she's like, hey, and she's like hitting on him. And she's like, I'm not wearing a bra. And she's like, I wonder where it is. And she pulls out this bra and James is like, oh my God, no, 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 please don't do that. And I mean, it was, I mean, it was a serious scene, but it was also comical. I thought that was great. I thought that Anthony Edwards was fine. I know some people thought he was stiff or he was boring, but with this character, I thought that's how he was supposed to come off, and I thought he played him well. Keisha Lewis, she played a mother who struggles to accept her daughter's deafness uh, impeccably. And you honestly want to feel bad for her, but at the same time, you want to go, what is wrong with you? You need to accept that your daughter is deaf, and there's nothing wrong with her. And I thought also the casting of the deaf actors to play deaf characters was the only right choice to do. Uh, if, if it was like hearing, if they wouldn't play it as well, you wouldn't understand the struggles that they go through. So it was A plus casting for that. And now for the stage door report. Um, this was one of the chillest stage doors I've ever been to. I was just expecting it to be a madhouse just because, you know, Joshua Jackson is there and Anthony Edwards was there. And surprisingly, everyone was just chill, calm, respectful. Uh, surprisingly, everyone came out. Um, Anthony was the first one to come out. He did sign and he took pictures. I even got a picture with him up here. He was just so incredibly nice. And then he, you know, after he went through everybody, he just rode off on his bike and went to wherever he had to go. And then eventually, the, like, it only took like a few minutes. The rest of the cast came out. What... I really loved about this stage door experience is there were a few fans that were deaf or hard of hearing. It was just so awesome to see these fans interact with actors who are also deaf and hard of hearing um, sign and, and, you know, speak to one another. There was, you know, the deaf actors were teaching everyone how to sign thank you, which was this. And I hope I'm doing that correctly. Please correct me in the comments below if I did that wrong. It was just, it was great to see. Just awesome interaction. And all the actors, like everyone was just, and I can't emphasize this enough. All the actors were just so incredibly sweet. And I always asked them, like, I always asked them before I did. I was like, can I take a selfie with you? And a few of them had to be signed with that. Or they understood, like, when I held the camera and I pointed, they're like, yes, of course. And I got a few photos, too, with Lauren and Trishel. Um, When Keisha came out, I totally geeked out. Because I really, really, really love her in Leap of Faith. And I also loved her as she played a judge on SVU. And I got to tell her this in person. She's like, oh, my God, thank you. And so I got a photo with her. And, of course, like, everybody who was in the show, there's only, like, seven characters. But everyone signed this playbill and I was like oh that's so great it's just a very chill so expect a very chill and respectful uh stage door if you are into that overall see this play if you like plays about the deaf community if you have any sort of connection with the deaf community if you're fans of any of the actors or actresses if you are a fan of great and simple staging and if you want a better understanding of the deaf community and the conflict it faces in the hearing world. Do not see it if you're offended over certain words. And this, um, warning, they do use the word retarded kind of a lot. And especially by Keisha's character, Mrs. Norman, this was used a lot. There's a reason why this was used, but some people might be taken aback by it or they might be offended because it was used. But I have to emphasize this point. This play takes place 
in the 1970s, where the world was a lot less politically correct, where any word was just thrown into the wind, you know, without, you know, any consequences at all. And actually, personally, I thought that was good that they did that, just to show how much we have grown from, you know, how much we've grown up from, from, you know, using that word to using other words. Do not see this play if you are put off or distracted by closed captioning. I did see a few reviews that said they were totally distracted, which I don't understand because it was under, it was, you know, over the thing. Um, and not like in the middle, I don't know, you could just look down and not see it. That's my only tip. Or if you're into plays with happier, fluffy endings, do not see this. Or, you know, just a warning, it's not a happy play. I would give Children of a Lesser God an 85 out of 100. I definitely thought it was a B-B show. I would definitely give this one a look. Thank you so much for watching this review of A Children of a Lesser God. Uh, stay tuned for more reviews. I definitely have a few more coming up. Bye!